In the last 4 episodes of this series, I've shown you the best way to create your dream trading strategy. In each episode, concepts related to different types of indicators were addressed. Indicators those that, when used individually, swim like little fishes, but when inserted in a system where they have to work as a team, they become real sharks. But we know that sometimes, sharks are only aggressive during a certain time of the year. But, in our case, we want our strategy to work all year round with the maximum possible performance. And for that, we have to carry out a large statistical study where we will apply our strategy in the most adverse conditions possible. Could it be that our shark is just a small reef shark? Or is it a legendary prehistoric monster? In today's video, we will find out. Let's go! As you have already noticed, today's episode will be only dedicated to the statistical analysis of our strategy, where I will teach you how to apply 4 great robustness tests that will reveal how efficient our strategy is. And believe me, you will not find the contents that I will show you today in any other video. This is because it is very simple to create a random strategy for a video in a few minutes. The difficult part is to show and especially prove that it is efficient and consistent enough to be applied in real trading conditions. For those who have never heard this term, robustness tests in trading refer to a series of tests that are conducted to assess the performance of a trading strategy under different market conditions and assumptions. These tests are performed to evaluate the ability of a trading strategy to adapt to changes in the market environment and ensure that the strategy is not over-optimized to a specific set of market conditions. Some common robustness tests in trading include Walk-forward testing. This involves applying the strategy on a forward period to evaluate its ability to perform well in new market conditions. R of sample testing. This involves testing the strategy on data that was not used in the optimization process to establish whether the strategy can perform well on new data. In the creation of my strategy, I already applied this type of test, but today I will do it again and in another way. Sensitivity testing. This involves testing the strategy under different parameter values and market assumptions to uncover its robustness. And for me, it is the most important test. And finally, Monte Carlo simulations, which I have also briefly shown you in episodes 2, 3 and 4. You can research more about this topic, but by conducting these tests, you can gain confidence in your trading strategy and ensure that it is robust enough to perform well in a variety of market conditions. As I told you, in today's episode I will perform 4 different tests. The first will be a new R of sample test, the second and third ones will be sensitivity tests and the last will be a walk-forward test. Before starting these tests, I will again recap my strategy for those who don't recall it. If you remember my strategy, skip to the next chapter of this video. Therefore, my strategy will be for the 2-hour time frame. I will apply it in the cryptocurrency market and these were the cryptos that I chose to carry out the backtests on the previous episodes to create it. My risk management will be done using the ATR indicator with the default settings. My confirmation indicator, which is the indicator that provides the entry signals, will be the QQEMT4 with the settings 14, 5 and 4.238. My filter indicator, which is the indicator that eliminates false entry signals from the QQEMT4, will be the Untrend Price DPO with a period of 21. My volume indicator that protects me from entering in a sideways market will be the Wadaratar explosion with the settings 110, 20, 40, 20 and 2. And finally, my exit indicator, which is the indicator that I use to verify the best time to exit a trade, will be the tricks with the settings 7, 1, 9 with SMAs. My back tests were divided into two, in sample and out of sample and they were applied to the data for the years 2019 to 2022. The equity chart looks like this, and the statistic I got on this large sample was a win rate of 58.4%, with an average annual profit of 164%, and a max drawdown of 41.28%, 
on over 2,500 trading signals. Note that the average annual profit and max drawdown are taking into account a risk per trading signal of 2%. For more information, see the fourth episode of this series. Without further ado, let's move on to the first robustness test I'm going to do, a new hour of sample test, and this will be the simplest one. As I said, when creating my strategy, I already use this type of test, but just in case, I will carry out a new hour of sample backtest with the same 7 cryptos, but this time on the data from the year 2018. And what we want to know is simple. If the statistical results are similar or better than the average results I told you before, then our strategy passes this test. But if the results are much worse, then we could have a big problem here. No, God, please, no, no! Therefore, I will use my backtesting bot to apply my strategy to the 2018 data of the 7 cryptos that I have analyzed. I will do it, then I will create a new Excel with all the traits that the strategy gave, and I will be right back. Here are the results of my R of sample backtest to the 2018 data. The application conditions were exactly the same as the ones used during the creation of the strategy. As you can see, the results are pretty good. The win rate increased to 61.4%, but it is similar to the one achieved in the 2019-2022 to data sample. The profit was quite high, which is very positive. The average risk to reward ratio increased to 1.11, but again, it is similar to the one achieved during the creation of my strategy. All the ratios increased, the average drawdown was lower, and the max drawdown was also very similar to the one we got during the backtests. The equity curve is also pretty consistent, as you can see. So, it is easy to conclude that the strategy passed on this first test with distinction. But don't launch rockets yet, we still have 3 big robustness tests to do before confirming that this strategy is efficient. The next two tests will be the sensitivity tests, which are, in my opinion, the main robustness tests. Here we have several forms of testing. They are those who change the settings of the strategy indicators, but I, from experience, find changing the settings a little irrelevant and subjective. I prefer to apply the strategy, as it is, on completely different data and on a large sample. For that, what I'm going to do in these two next tests is quite simple and it will be very important to have the confirmation that the strategy is consistent and not overfitted to the data of the 7 cryptos that I choose. For the first sensitivity test, I will choose another 7 cryptos with a high market cap, but different from the ones I used before. And for the second test, which is what I usually call the big boss, I will apply the strategy as it is, on a different market and in a different time frame, and we will see what happens. Let's perform the first sensitivity test. Therefore, the new 7 cryptos that I will use to apply the strategy are Binance Coin, Polygon Matic, Uniswap, Dogecoin, Solana, Polkadot and Vchain. Due to the fact that most of these cryptos do not have data until 2019, I will use the most recent data sample from 2021 and 2022 to perform this test. I will again backtest these cryptos with my backtesting bot and I will create another Excel sheet with all the traits so that we can then analyze the annual average results and compare them with the results of our initial backtest. Let's start our second robustness test. Here are all the results of my second robustness backtest. Again, the application conditions were exactly the same as the ones used before. Now, let's check the statistics. Firstly, we can verify that the equity curve is not as constant as this one, but that doesn't mean that it is inconsistent. We can verify that it has an increasing and positive tendency, which is very good. Regarding the win rate, average annual profit and number of annual trades, we can see that the numbers are very similar, which is an excellent sign. The average risk to reward ratio and the profit factor also remained almost identical. The max drawdown has slightly increased, which is normal and nothing serious, and the average drawdown has decreased. 
Regarding our two ratios, despite having dropped slightly, they still have very acceptable values. As such, we can safely say that based on this statistic, our strategy passed the second robustness test. I wasn't expecting such good results, but this just shows that the strategy was well constructed, and just like when building a house, if the base is solid, then the outcome will always be excellent. Now it's time for the big boss test, which is the third one I'm going to perform and the most critical one. As I said at the intro of this video, I will apply the strategy in the most adverse conditions possible. As you know, the forex market is one of the most difficult markets to trade. And why? Because about 80% of the time, there are no trends in the currency pairs. So, due to the fact that my strategy is a trend-following strategy, the data of the forex market is the most hostile one that we can find. Will my crypto strategy survive in the challenging conditions of the forex market? Before moving forward, write in the comments what you think will happen. So, for this sensitivity test, I'm going to apply the strategy on the daily time frame of the forex market, and I will use a sample with data from 10 years, which is formed by the years from 2013 to 2022. And since there are people who, I don't know why, don't believe in the veracity of my results, and think that I chose the best pairs to show here in the video, I'm going to use the 28 most popular currency pairs to carry out this great test. Yes, you heard correctly, I'm going to apply the strategy to a sample made up of 10 years and on 28 different currency pairs. I know it will be more time consuming for me, but it will be worth it, as then there will be no doubt about the veracity of my results. The chosen time frame was the daily one, due to this being a time frame less crushed by economic news which will make the results of the strategy as fair as possible. And for the most distracted, throughout this series, I never used any forex pair in the backtest, it was only crypto. And, as such, my strategy never had access to this data in the forex market. Due to this reason, and due to the fact that this strategy is for the crypto market, I will not care too much about how the statistics of this test will be. The most important thing in this test is to know if the strategy simply survives and if the equity curve is constant, as this will show without any doubt that this strategy is really efficient and is ready to be applied whatever the conditions present in the markets are. I don't know if you guys are excited, but I am. So without further ado, let's test the strategy with my backtesting bot on the 28 currency pairs. After putting all the results together in a new Excel sheet, here are all the statistics about this third robustness test. As I told you, I'm not going to give much importance to the stats, but if you want, you can put the video on pause and watch them all. I will immediately move on to the analysis of the equity curve, which, as you can see, is impeccable. It has a growing and constant trend and does not show any unusual drop. And take note, this is not the equity chart of a backtest with 100 or 200 trades, but with over 3000 trades. As such, we can verify that the big boss test has been defeated. The strategy also passed this robustness test and with great quality. Although for me, these two last tests were the most important and relevant to access the consistency of the strategy, I will still, as I told you earlier, carry out a final test before moving on to our conclusions which is the walk forward test. For that, I'm going to analyze the results that I would have obtained with this strategy in the first 3 months of 2023. I know, testing 3 months is not the same as testing 12, but it is the only most recent data I have available at the moment. But as the objective is only to see if the strategy is consistent, I think that 3 months are enough for that. To keep the stats balanced, I'm going to forward test 7 cryptos in this new sample and I'm going to use a mix of the cryptos I used when creating the backtest and the others I have just used in the first sensitivity test, which was the second robustness test. I will choose them at random and I will again apply my backtesting bot to check what trades I would have made and then create another excel sheet. I will do that and I will be right back. Don't, don't, don't. 
before showing you the results, I'm just going to transfer this annual statistic to a monthly statistic in order to compare the results of these two samples more easily. And here are all the results of my fourth robustness backtest. Due to the fact that we are only looking at 3 months of data, it is not very relevant to analyze and compare neither the equity curve or the statistics related to ratios. But anyway, you can pause the video if you want to see all the details. The most important thing in this robustness test is to verify whether the average monthly profit as well as the average number of monthly signals are maintained. And in this case, we can verify that yes, they remain consistent. Here, in our initial backtest from 2019 to 2022, the average monthly profit on 7 cryptos is 13.73% with an average number of monthly signals of 53. And here, in our latest backtest to the first 3 months of 2023, again on 7 cryptos, the average monthly profit is 12.64% with an average number of monthly signals of 54. Regarding the win rate, it dropped from 58.4 to 53.8%, but that doesn't matter much, because, as I mentioned, a sample of 3 months is very small. But, in the end, we can verify throughout this real statistical data that our strategy is not a reef shark at all, as it passed, and with great distinction, all the robustness tests carried out. As such, now we can say with certainty that this strategy is efficient and will most likely maintain its performance when applied in real market conditions. After all, all this work was worth it, and I couldn't be more pleased with these results. There is only one more thing left to do, that is to redo the backtest taking into account the cryptos and broker where we will want to apply this strategy and also taking into account all the commissions so that I can present with you the most real and approximate results of what your results will be when applying this strategy to your personal trading account, but that will be for the next episode. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any episodes. I hope you enjoyed it and above all that you learned something new. Be well, thank you, bye bye.